Metro Count, the traffic data specialists. Okay, so to convince yourself that we're dealing with good data, what we need is a reference. Okay, so this is tube data and, you know, most of our operators do the right thing most of the time and gather themselves a good data set. But if I'm going to stand up in court, make a statement, statement about the veracity of data, I need to convince myself that I'm dealing with good data. How do I do that? Probably the best way is against a reference. Now, the reference data we got permission to use is owned and collected by Main Roads here in Western Australia. And it's of a very busy six lane freeway location here in Perth. The data's gathered not using tube, it uses embedded piezo strips, which are precisely installed, so gathering a very accurate data set year round. This six lanes of data is extremely busy, so using a reference site, we can examine, say, the wheelbase of certain characteristic vehicles uh, from one site to another, from the reference site to the sample site. If the wheelbase picture lines up, then we know that we're dealing with good data and we can make conclusions from it. So let's examine how we uh, make that assessment. So here's the outback data. We'll produce a report called the weekly vehicle count. And we're using the scheme ARX where class one is motorcycles, class two is your cars, right through to large heavy vehicles, road trains, etc. class 10, 11, 12. So one data set starts in January. There's many pages of data in this report. Let's stop on a particular week. And you can see we're recording 50 to 100 vehicles per day. So it's a fairly low volume site, you know, maybe 10 to 12 vehicles per hour during the busy periods of the day. And that goes on for many pages. In this data set, we're dealing with 20,000 vehicles. What we'll do now is we'll produce the same report for the freeway data, the six lanes, three in each direction. Load, yes. Tag the data sets. Right click, tag, next. Same report, weekly vehicle counts, choose next. Same profile. And instead of 20,000 vehicles, we're now looking at a data set containing 700, close to 750,000 vehicles, so significantly more vehicles. And we're looking at daily volumes in the vicinity of 115, 120,000 vehicles per day. So we've got a very sound reference. And the logic being behind referencing one site against the other is that in any particular geographical region the fleet of vehicles is reasonably consistent so that if I apply a filter that looks at just the two axle vehicles which in ARX is your class 2 and your class 4 if I apply that filter to both data sets I should see a characteristic set of wheelbases. So let's analyse that a bit further. What we'll do is we'll have a look at the wheelbase histogram. It's a chart. This is for the outback site. It's actually called a span histogram in the later versions of the software because we don't always deal with wheelbases. Tube and piezo data, it's essentially the wheelbase. So we're looking at the span histogram at the outback site for, and we'll uncheck them all, the short vehicles, which are your cars, class two, and your TB2s, which are your truck or buses with two axles. So we're basically looking at the cars and light trucks with two axles. Let's choose OK. So there's the span histogram for this outback location. Now the horizontal axis is showing us from zero to 50 metres. And of course, because we're dealing with two axled vehicles, everything's clustered down the left hand side of the graph so what we need to do is zoom that up a bit so let's go right click and go properties and we'll change the maximum x scale from 50 just simply down to 5 that's going to bring it to about this point here so we'll expand this part of the graph choose ok and there we have it 
Okay, so this is a fairly low volume site. What this graph is showing us is the number of vehicles with that wheelbase. So they range in the vicinity. There's some over on the left-hand side. They might be very small vehicles, but they range essentially from around about 2.4 metres uh, up to around about 3 metres and beyond, but the bulk of them are clustered between that 2.4 metre range and let's say around about 3.4 meters. Remember this is based on every individual axle being recorded so this is a histogram of every vehicle that was in that data set. Let's zoom this up a bit so we can see some of the detail. Let's zoom it to 200 percent. What we want to do now is clone this report. This is a quick way, a little tip for producing uh, another report. The clone button here creates an exact copy but what I'll do is put the very heavy volume location, the freeway site, into the report instead. So what I do is right click, choose file list, get rid of the outback data from the report and tag instead the freeway data, right? So I've tagged them all, right click, tag, putting six lanes of high volume data into this report. I get a time filter alert because it was gathered at slightly different times, doesn't matter, choose OK. Slightly different looking graph, let's zoom that up again, right click, properties, span down to five meters and there we have the graph. Now you can see straight away if I toggled between them that the wheelbase histogram of the outback site versus the very heavy volume freeway site has a significantly different look and that is primarily down to the fact that the freeway site is extremely busy, has a high volume and so there's a great deal of smoothing occurring so any of the peaks that are occurring in this freeway data, there's one there at 2.47, there's one there at 2.65, another dominant peak there at about 2.7 metres thereabouts, 2.78, 2.8 metres. Each one of those peaks represents the occurrence of a dominant vehicle type, maybe a Hyundai, could be um, a Ford, any of the sort of dominant vehicles that are driven around uh, on the West Australian roads. Now this is in Perth, this is a city location, but the same vehicle fleet exists in different proportions elsewhere amongst the state. So a particular model of Ford will be the same vehicle in Perth as it is in the outback. The wheelbases don't change. So we would expect if we're dealing with good data that characteristic peaks would line up. So let's test that theory now. So we drag a marker out of the graph region bar here and we'll position it right on top of that big peak there at 2.64 metres, 2.64. Go back to our outback data, grab the same thing. You can see the cursor crosshairs there, 3.5. We're looking for 2.64 metres. 2.654, there we are. Scroll that down. And you can see whilst it's on the shoulder, I might need to move it to the left a little bit just to see you can see that it, there is a peak occurring at 2.64 metres. So it's in a different, has a different height relativity compared to the very busy location, but its position in terms of wheelbase is spot on. Let's look at another one. Here's another dominant peak here, 2.47. And lo and behold, it's a small but clearly visible peak. So that the vehicle type that's resulting in a wheelbase of 2.47 metres in the metropolitan high volume location is also present in the outback location. Obviously in lower volumes, but it's still present. You would expect that in an outback location we might have a higher proportion of larger, more robust vehicles. So some of the small vehicles you see on a metropolitan road aren't present. So we can make a case. Let's have a look at some more. Is another dominant peak at about 2.78 metres. Back here to the outback data, 2.78 metres. And lo and behold, 2.78 metres is clearly on a peak. 